Hello, what it? Welcome to the Empirical Sword, where science is gaming pools awesome. I'm Lowmaster DLC79, and today I want to know, are survival games doomed to lose their replay value? And, okay, but by survival games, I'm not talking about, like, horror survival games like Resident Evil or uh, Amnesia. Resident Evil's not really a... Okay, it's, it's technically horror, but uh, beside the point. I'm talking more like games uh, similar to Minecraft, Seven Days to Die, that sort of thing, where you're just... You're plopped in the middle of a world, you have nothing, and you need to find supplies to keep yourself. You know, you're fed because you get hungry, you need to stay hydrated, maybe you need to stay warm, uh, you need to build a shelter, so you need to you know, you know, farm building materials like wood or, or um, stone or something, and, and then you need like, like to get iron and other materials to make armor and weapons because monsters are going to be spawning continually and coming in wave after wave after wave, and you just survive. And then some like, uh, uh, pretty, yeah, yeah, pretty much all of them, I think, have uh, some kind of building, because yeah, you need to build a survival, uh, shelter for survival. Um, a few of them actually have some kind of electrical thing, you know, you know like redstone in Minecraft, and I, I think Ark Survival Evolved has electrical things. So pretty much all of them have have the goal of, of, of you know, staying alive for as long as possible. And some may even have boss fights and other kinds of achievements that uh, serve as some sort of a, some sort of achievement system. But you know whether it's you know, building extravagant extravagant things, uh, automating everything, or fighting all the bosses, or getting all the achievements or something, eventually. Every player is going to get to a point where they've done everything in the game world that they want to. So what do you do then? Well, I mean, if, if it's if, in the cases like more story-oriented games, uh, if you want to relive the story, you can just replay it. In uh, role-playing games, if you want to relive the story as a different kind of class, maybe as a mage this time rather than an assassin, then you can just replay the game. But let's look at the replay value of survival games. Um, f first of all, Ark is kind of an exception to this rule because there's only one island. You, you restart the game, you restart on the same island. So that's the same, but pretty much all the others, there's just like some sort of a, a seed value in the terrain generator that determines what the map looks like. So uh, you can replay the game with the exact same mechanics, but in a completely different setting. So at least there's that. But you're still having to find food and find water and stay warm and build shelter and make weapons and armor and fight off monsters, the same exact monsters over and over and over and over. And Yes, you can build things, but in, in, maybe you've learned some stuff from your previous playthrough and you, you have better designs for your buildings, but you eventually you get to a point where you've done everything in the game that you want to. You know, let, let's look, for example, at, at uh, Minecraft. Um, one thing that I, I noticed after the 1.8 update is that there are all, all, a good number of YouTubers, you know, at least the YouTubers that I watched, uh, who were like, uh, yeah, you, we're not doing Minecraft again until 1.9 comes out. And, well, 1.9 took a very long time to come out. So there, there was a very long time, long period there where people, a lot of people, uh, were not playing Minecraft. And really, I, during that period, I don't think I was playing Minecraft a lot either, but for different reasons. But eventually 1.9 came out, and, and you know, all, all these YouTubers that I was watching, you, you started doing Minecraft again for a while. And then they stopped. And, and then 1.10 came out very quickly, and, and they're doing Minecraft again for a while. And it's, it's, I think Minecraft has gotten to a point where we're not really playing Minecraft anymore. We're playing the updates until we get bored with the updates. And then we stop playing Minecraft until the next update. Then we start playing Minecraft again. And you, th this is kind of the crux of, of the question I have. You know, eventually, you know, game developers are going to reach a point where they've added everything to a game that they feel like they can. You know, eventually they're going to run out of ideas because you know, we're, we're humans, we're finite. We have finite ideas. So, so at that point, when a game is no longer getting more updates, 
what, what is there left to do? What, what, is, what is the new content that is going to drive people to want to play the game? Now, interesting little hitch there. Minecraft has actually been very popular for a very long time as compared to other games. So now, now could it be that Minecraft is just one of those games that... First of all, Minecraft is one of those games that just appeals to everybody. It's not just... It's made for children, but there are plenty of adults who enjoy Minecraft. And you, you, just, just the fact that there's such a wide um, age group that Minecraft appeals to is... is I think makes it kind of an exception. It, it kind of makes me wonder that, that if if a game has such a, a wide range of age groups that it appeals to, um, could it be that as you know, a, a certain generation of players, gamers who are interested in, in like this hypothetical game, as, as they get bored with the game, start dropping it, then maybe a, a new generation starts picking it up because. It just has such a wide appeal across multiple age groups. You know, c could that even be possible? Because I mean, I mean, if you think about it like this, <clears throat> when I started playing Minecraft, we had no horses, we had no hoppers, um, we had no Elytra. It's, the Wither wasn't even a thing. The, the 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 only end boss, you know, when I started playing, was the Inner Dragon, and, and then the people before me, they didn't even have the Inner Dragon. The people who are, who are picking up Minecraft today or, or 10 years from now, uh, they're going to have all these things. They're going to have horses and Elytra and, and Withers and, and, and the, the woodland mansions and all that. Yeah, so as, 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 when they pick up you know, Minecraft as it is now and, and they continue playing it, you, you, what, what new content is go they're going to be to keep them playing for an extended period? And I'm not talking about you know extended you know play sessions. I mean, what's what's going to you know what updates are going to continue to hold their interest over you know months or years? Because again, we all reach that point where it's like we're not playing the game anymore. We're just playing the updates. We're playing the game to see the updates. So, you know, I, I just look back at at uh, pretty much all survival games, and even MMOs, in order to hold a gamer's attention for more than like a month or two, there had to be constant regular updates, new content, repeatedly, just new content, new content, new content. It's like we had to be fed new content to, you know, just, just to want to interface with the game. I mean, I, I, can, I can see that, that if a game has a, has a very wide appeal across multiple age groups, that that it has the potential to you know, be entertaining to many generations, and you maybe even a hundred years in the future. But it, the whole content thing, if we need to, if a gamer is supposed to you know, be intrigued by a game for more than a few months, then where's the new content? Eventually, we're going to run out of content. Because eventually developers are going to run out of ideas. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of the question that I have right now. And, you know, I, I can't really come up with an answer. And, you, and, you know, may, maybe there is no definitive answer. Uh, so, I mean, you know, on the one hand, we have the idea that, that, that if a game can be entertaining to a very wide range of ages, then, then you know, maybe you know, it, it, it can be, you know, passed from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, on into the future, but at the same time, to just hold a gamer's attention for more than like a month, maybe two months, you know, th th there needs to be some kind of new content, you know, drip-fed into the game, just to keep gamers coming back and, you know, enjoying it until such time that, you know, they're old enough that they can pass it on to the next generation. So yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, these two ideas—they they, kind of seem a little contradictory. So you know, what do you guys think? You know, just just pop down into the comments and and you know, start discussing what your ideas are about this whole situation. You, you do you think survival games could continue on indefinitely, uh, being passed from one generation to the next, or, or are we so dependent on? new content to hold our interest that that it's just not going to happen you just you tell me what you think